Hi. Well, I'm so glad that you've actually decided to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. But what does that really mean? You know, that's one thing that I think a lot of the times we as a culture just kind of just accept that as just a name. They said that, you know, hi, my name is Bob. Hi, my name is Sam. Hi, I'm Susie. I'm Sally, Jesse, Raphael. But those are just names. But what does it really mean to be saved? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Exactly what salvation is. Well, first of all, you got to ask yourself, what am I saved from? And that's a good question. And I think that goes all the way back to the beginning of time where you had two people. You had Adam and Eve stuck in a garden. We're not stuck. God placed them there in a garden. And it was a great place. I mean, everything was awesome. And there was a God that walked with his creation every single day. And he had a great time doing it. And they had a great time with him. There's only one thing. You see, God didn't want his creation to just love him because they had to. He wanted them to love him because they wanted to. I don't think that's too much to ask. Do you? I didn't think so. So he created what's called free will. And that gave man and woman the ability to either decide to love him or not love him. That's pretty easy. Think about it for a second. Could you imagine a girlfriend or boyfriend loving you because they are forced to love you? Like maybe your parents just didn't like think that you were like that awesome and so they decided to bribe somebody to date you, take you to homecoming? That's just cruel and unusual, isn't it? Well, that's what it's like. So God didn't want to God didn't want to go and and make people love him. So he gave him the opportunity. He gave him what's called free will. And of course, when people decide to not love God, they miss what God has for them. You see, God created mankind to have the ability to, to have a full life, a good life, a good life where he was at the helm. Not necessarily because he, got, he gets upset if, if you don't do what he asks you to do, but because he knows what's best. You see, he's your creator. He created everything about you. The Bible says that he knows how many hairs are on your head. For some of you, there's a lot more than I have, and yours probably aren't gray like mine are getting to be. But you see, God loved you, and God loved Adam and Eve. But because Adam and Eve decided to walk away from God, they missed out on what God had for them. And that's called the best. And unfortunately, generations from generations, we find ourselves in the same predicament. We find ourselves choosing the situations, choosing the lifestyles that aren't the best for us. Until one day... We're singing a service, or one day we just have this revelation, or one day we're reading a book, and all of a sudden it hits us. And that and that little voice inside of us says, this is, this is what you need. This is what you've been looking for. And so you raise your hand. Somebody asks you, to asks you to raise your hand. So you raise your hand. Maybe you come forward. Maybe you go in the back, and someone begins to try to cram salvation or the idea of salvation into a tiny little box and said, okay, this is, this is what it means to be a Christian. Well, I hate to say that, but... That's not really effective. And so that's why we want to take the time to really explain what it is. Basically, salvation is this. You were lost. I was lost. Everybody's lost. Until one day they find their creator. They find the person that loves them more than life itself. And for the first time in their life, they connect with that creator. For the first time in their life, they say, God, I want you to be a part of my life. And I want you to lead and guide me. Now, of course, at that very moment... Everything changes, right? No, not always right. Because sometimes people are stubborn. Because God gives us that free will, we don't always decide to just jump in wholeheartedly with both feet. In fact, I'd be a little scared if we did. But rather, just like in life, we take, it, we take things one step at a time. And that's exactly what God wants, is one step at a time. So today, you raise your hand for salvation. So now you're a believer. Well, tomorrow, maybe you're going to start reading your Bible and get to know this God. And then you realize that, wow, this is, this is something you really believe in. This is something you can really wrap your head around. And then you start to pray to this God, talk to this person that you've never met or seen. But yet, you feel like he's responding back to you. You can feel his presence. Then you come to a church service where everybody's raising their hands or, or talking to this God, and you think they're weird. But then you feel something in your spirit that, this is right. And you start talking to this God and all of a sudden things start making sense. And that's kind of how this works. You see, it's a friendship, a relationship, if you will. Relationships take time. You know, if you have a friend on Facebook, they're not your BFF just because you put them as your BFF on Facebook. But it takes time. You've got to read their statuses. They've got to read your statuses. You've got to take time to hang out with them. 
even outside of cyberspace. And the more you spend time with them, the more you connect with them, the more they become your friend. Someone you can trust in and they can trust in you. And that's what this relationship with God is all about. So today you're a believer. You believe in Jesus. But maybe tomorrow, next week, a year from now, he'll become the Lord of your life. And then you'll become a follower of Jesus Christ. So I really hope you take the time to, to just absorb what we talked about. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or message me on Facebook. And I, like I said at the beginning of this message, I am so excited for you. And I'm glad you started your faith journey. Till then, God bless. See you later. Bye-bye now.